it's interesting they choose words like uh, gender affirming care. You know, that, that's interesting that they call it that, but really what they're talking about is hormonal therapy or sex reassignment surgery on children. And in fairness, the American Medical Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Endocrine Society, or whatever the exact name of that is, all of the major medical associations have signed off on this, Joe. They've signed off on it. And I have never seen those organizations sign off on anything with less information as to whether or not it does long-term harm of anything in my life. And when I, when I ask about that, when I bring that up, then they immediately label you as transphobic. And I, I thought that the deal was first do no harm. And all of the European countries, you know, Sweden, Norway, they, they've all stopped doing it because they say, we, we cannot say in good conscience that this does no harm. Because it does harm. If, if, if you look at the long-term consequences, if someone changes their mind at 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, um, they can't decide which pajamas they want to wear at night. And their reason for doing it is it stops this drive for suicide, that there's a suicide epidemic. It doesn't fix that. It doesn't fix all the comorbid issues that come along with feeling like they're in the wrong body. Um, but yet they're pushing this. and it's we're going to do some shows that are already taped that are revealing what the real results of this are. And I think people are going to be shocked that these medical organizations have signed off on this. I think they've just given in to the pressure. Dr. Phil expresses profound concern about the long-term consequences of transgender therapy, specifically hormone treatments and pediatric surgeries. He emphasizes the need for careful consideration especially for minors who may not fully comprehend the implications. Dr. Phil questions the endorsement of transgender therapy by major medical associations, highlighting the lack of substantial evidence regarding its lasting effects, upholding the ethical principle of first, do no harm. He calls for rigorous scientific evaluation before embracing interventions with lifelong consequences. Dr. Phil's tendency to label dissenters as trans haters complicates public discourse, potentially stifling critical inquiry. This dynamic in transgender debates adds complexity to psychological dynamics and medical decision making, creating an environment where dissenting voices may be silenced. Addressing the intricate nature of identity formation. In adolescence, Dr. Phil stresses the importance of allowing individuals adequate time and support to navigate their identity journey. He advocates against hasty, irreversible medical interventions, recognizing the complexities involved. Despite concerns about potential harm from transgender care, Dr. Phil observes healthcare institutions pressuring adherence to specific ideologies. He underscores the significance of resisting external pressures and staying true to oneself amid societal expectations. This sheds light on the psychological impact these expectations can have on individual autonomy and decision-making processes.